Hi there, this is Erin Nicole and you're listening to the Move Happy Movement podcast. On this show I interview people from all over the world. Um, Often the Holy Spirit will give me a topic to do a sermon and I'll speak myself um, impromptu on whatever, whatever the topic is and sometimes Sometimes I share music with you to help empower you to find happiness from within. Um, I use real stories, real science, and real authentic music um, that he inspires through me to help you. If you're struggling with depression, depressed state, maybe postpartum depression, Uh, Maybe you're going through a difficult season. You haven't been diagnosed with anything necessarily, but you know that you haven't been feeling yourself for a couple weeks or longer. Uh, This show is for you. I was uh, was actually just kind of worshiping in my living room, listening to some gospel music, and the Holy Spirit was giving me some scriptures and whispered to me the topic, He is a compassionate Father. So that is that is the topic. Uh, first things first, um, he is our heavenly Father, meaning that he cares for all of us. That is that is my belief system that he allowed us to be created to walk this earth for a certain amount of time. He cares for us. He desires for us to make decisions that will benefit our life and other lives. Um, But he also gives us free will to make our own decisions, make our own choices. And sometimes when those decisions are in conflict with what he desires for us, uh, we get separated from him uh, for a time because he can't be anywhere near sin. And if we're choosing to be apart from him, uh, for you know a certain amount of time, then uh, that is the time period that we have to experience difficulty, experience uh, pain, suffering, maybe loss. Uh, but he always welcomes us home. He is a very compassionate father. He also he has an angry side. This righteous anger against those that harm others, especially children and vulnerable persons. But if we repent, he is very forgiving. Uh, One of the scriptures that the Holy Spirit whispered to me as I was worshiping, kind of doing a little dance and praise, was in uh, the book of Jonah. In the Old Testament. And uh, if you don't know the story of Jonah, um, he was assigned to go to Nineveh. And and Nineveh was a very rebellious, uh, prominent city, but very rebellious. Uh, There was lots of evil going on there, and uh, he was scared to go. So he went the opposite direction, got himself on a boat. the boat, there was a storm, uh, got kicked off the boat, uh, got swallowed by a whale and was in the belly of a whale for three days and uh, basically prayed out to the father and said, please forgive me, I'll be obedient now. And uh, the father spat him out of the whale and then he went to Nineveh. And so that's where uh, the uh, scripture that I was told to read. So in chapter 3, Verse 3, I'm just going to read till the end of the chapter. Uh, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them, from the greatest to the least, Put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree 
of the king and his nobles. Do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that he will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. We serve a very compassionate father. When I was uh, working in a psychiatric hospital where uh, actually Move Happy was first created, uh, one of the weekly topics I had put into the journal was compassion. And I had a uh, colleague uh, who who was a... Um, at one point, he was a stand-up comedian. Then he got into, um, I will say supportive services. I believe he was an occupational therapist assistant by uh, profession at the hospital. Uh, but also, he was very uh, connected to his, his uh, faith. And he spoke on the uh, kind of definition of compassion from the historical standpoint, um, which is to truly feel and understand the pain of which someone else goes through. To literally walk in their shoes as if you were going through the same pain. Uh, If they're going through difficulty, you would essentially be going through that same difficulty. And to say that our father is compassionate, he understands exactly the pains that we go through because he gave his own son to be the bearer of all of our sins and the final sacrifice. His son died a horrific death on a cross and defeated death because after he died the physical death, he rose again on the third day And there's a lot of significance on three days. If you remember me just now reading in Jonah chapter three, it was such a prominent city that it took three days to visit minimum. That number is repeated often in the scriptures. And to say that our father in heaven was compassionate enough, he understood that the people truly changed their hearts asked for forgiveness, and he gave it to them. Instead of completely destroying that whole land, which he could have done, he chose to forgive them and to wipe the slate clean. How neat is that? How neat is that that we have a Father in Heaven who cares about us, desires for us to make good decisions for our life, to you know, have a prominent life where we're able to use our gifts, help others, experience joys, excitement, abundance, but also gives us the free will to choose to love him and be obedient to him and his calling on our lives or to choose to be distant from him and try and do life on our own. Regardless, he is compassionate if we admit fault and ask for forgiveness. All right, I'm getting another scripture. So I'm going to go this time to the New Testament. If you want to turn in your Bible to 2 Corinthians. Thirteen, four. at the beginning of chapter uh, 
13 of 2 Corinthians, it says final warnings. So verse 4, for to be sure he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power, we will live with him to serve you. Yes, Father. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail. Do you not realize, I apologize, that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong Not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is for your perfection. That is why I write these things when I am absent. That when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. We are weak in his strength. And he desires for us. um, That word perfection, I believe, is another way of saying holy, to live in the intentions that he has desired for us. And he actually, he builds this wall of protection for us that even even when we have opportunities to walk away from him, to experiment in life, he provides us a wall of protection. And I actually wrote a song about this um, it is called I will never walk away f- from you <clears throat> it hits me when I least expect it the enemy tries to steal my joy I will not allow my heart to be broken into pieces Cause nothing gets to me without your permission Nothing gets to me without me through every season it covers me
There's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I could say. There's nothing in this world that could take your love away. There's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I could say. There's nothing in this world that could take your love away. In this world you built around me, it covers me through every season. It covers me through every season. In this world you built surrounds me. I will never walk away from you. I will never walk away from you. And uh, it's true. There is a wall that he builds that protects us. And if we stay in alignment with, with the purpose and plan that he has for us, don't try to do life on our own. Um, there is nothing that can separate us from his love. Um, He's giving me another verse here in chapter, or excuse me, in, in the book of James in the New Testament. Chapter 2, verse 2. It's about favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom? He promised those who love him. Okay. He's given me... Um, Old Testament scripture now. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 13, verse 3. Abijah went into battle with a force of 400,000 able fighting men, and Jeroboam drew up a battle line against him with 800,000 able troops. So 400,000 versus 800,000. Abijah stood on Mount Zamorim in the hill country of Ephraim and said, Jeroboam and all Israel, listen to me. Don't you know that the Lord, the God of Israel, has given the kingship of Israel to David and his descendants forever by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, son of Nebat, an official of Solomon, son of David, rebelled against his master. Some worthless scoundrels gathered around him and opposed Rehoboam, son of Solomon, when he was young and indecisive and not strong enough to resist them. And now you plan to resist the kingdom of the Lord, which is in the hands of David's descendants. You are indeed a vast army and have with you the golden calves that Jeroboam made to be your gods. But didn't you drive out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and make priests of your own as the people of other lands do. Whoever comes to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may become a priest of what are not gods. As for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. The priests who serve the Lord are sons of Aaron, and the Levites assist them. Every morning and evening they present burnt offerings and fragrant incense to the Lord. They set out the bread on the ceremonially clean table and light the lamps on the gold lampstand every evening. We are observing the requirements of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. God is with us. He is our leader. His priests with their trumpets will sound the battle cry against you. Men of Israel, do not fight against the Lord the God of your fathers, for you will not succeed. 
Now Jeroboam had sent troops around to the rear, so that while he was in front of Judah, the ambush was behind them. Judah turned and saw that they were being attacked at both front and rear. Then they cried out to the Lord. The priests blew their trumpets, and the men of Judah raised the battle cry. At the sound of their battle cry, God routed Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. The Israelites fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hands. Abijah and his men inflicted heavy losses on them, so there were 500,000 casualties. So they went from 800,000 to 300,000 among Israel's able men. The men of Israel were subdued on that occasion, and the men of Judah were victorious because they relied on the Lord, the God of their fathers. Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took from him the towns of Bethel, Jeshanah, and Ephron with their surrounding villages. Jeroboam did not regain power during the time of Abijah, and the Lord struck him down, and he died. But Abijah grew in strength. He married 14 wives and had 22 sons and 16 daughters. Ooh, that's a big family. The other events of Abijah's reign, what he did and what he said, are written in the annotations of the prophet Edo. Trust in the Father. He provides a hedge of protection over his children. He is a very protective and jealous father. If we put him first, if we worship him first, love him first, he has designed an incredible life for all of us. But when we start getting distracted, focusing on our own desires, on worshiping other idols, on focusing on vanity instead of worshiping him and finding our purpose within his plans for us. When we do things that separate us from his protection, we're no longer in that hedge. So you definitely want to spend time daily in in prayer and meditation and ask him, Father, what is it that you desire for me to do today? You know, I'm obedient. I desire to you know, be obedient to your plans that you have intended for me and then get quiet and allow him to speak to you in that still, small, quiet voice. Or maybe he'll tell you to get your journal out and you'll write. Or maybe he'll speak to you through others, speaking words of encouragement to you. Um, He desires for me to read some more. Um, In the New Testament, going back to the book of James, chapter 3, this is uh, regarding our tongue and being able to tame the tongue is very challenging. Uh, Verse 3, when we put, uh, put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouths come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Two kinds of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. 
But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Amen. He guides us in the scriptures in how to live and operate on the earth. And he is compassionate towards us. When we make mistakes and we humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness... If you don't have a personal relationship with the Father uh, who gives hope beyond this short, finite life we have on earth, uh, because he gives the gift of eternity in heaven with him, if you'd like to have a personal relationship and you haven't made that decision yet, uh, you can simply repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your gift of salvation. Father, I'm a sinner. I make mistakes, but I desire to walk in your obedience. Father, please forgive me of all my sins. Please come into my heart and guide my every step. Thank you, Father. I pray this in your heavenly name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to welcome you to the family. Your next step You want to get plugged into a Bible-based church. You want to keep him first place. And he asked, Father. All right, he's giving me another verse. So I'm going back to, he really likes the book of James in this sermon today. James 1.1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. Trials Trials and temptations. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because... He who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in his low position, because he will pass away like a wild flower, for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created, listening and doing. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. 
Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. There is no ask today. Um, the only ask is that uh, I desire for you to learn more about your new walk with him. If you just prayed that prayer with me aloud, spend time in the scriptures and ask him to reveal your purpose in life and do a little bit every day to reach towards perfection. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tell someone you love them today. And we'll see you next time.